Yeah. Okay. We can start. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good evening to everyone and welcome to our today's session. Okay, so before moving forward, I would like to ask ladies and gentlemen, do you know that air pollution in both cities and rural areas was estimated to cost 4.2 million premature death worldwide per year in 2019? Well, such a large number, isn't it? And of course, I believe that some of us are still unaware and being ignorant towards air pollution. Therefore, we believe that this issue should be discussed and this bring us together for these uh, sessions. With me, Dr. Aimuni, as your moderator, and for this forum, we invited four professional panelists together with us for today. So, without further ado, let's get to know our panelists. Well, for first panelists, we have the health advocate of BE Corporations, which is one of the largest health facility in Malaysia, Miss Zunur Amalia. Well, Miss Zunur, how was your day at work? It was good, as usual, Dr. Aimuni. Thank you for asking. Ah, oh, lovely, Miss Zunur. Well, of course, she is someone that is professional, so she would have a great day at work. Well, great to know that. Now, moving forward to the second panelist, which is we have someone from the environmental scientist, Dr. Alicia Sofia Tajudin. Okay, so doctor, uh, I believe that you are away for business trip in Scotland. So may I know, how is the weather over there, doctor? Yes, Dr. Daimuni, it is currently raining cats and ducks over here. I see. Well, uh, I hope that you take uh, a good care of yourself, uh, Dr. Alicia. Well, in Malaysia, of course, we are currently uh, ongoing a uh, mixed uh, season where it's uh, scorching hot during the day and it rains uh, during the evening. Well, moving forward to the third panelist, which is the Secretary of Treasurer and the only gentleman in our today's forum. So, uh, Mr. Mubariz Ahmad, uh, I would like to ask, what do you feel about our session for today, Mr. Mubariz? You forgot your mic. Sorry, Mr. Mubariz. All right, sorry. Uh, I feel excited to uh, share my point of view regarding this uh, issue and I'm also excited to hear all the panelists' uh, uh, point of view regarding this topic. Okay, wonderful, Mr. Mubaris. Of course, well, same as you, of course, I am excited as well for today's session. Now, uh, moving on to the four panelists, which is we have a lovely lady from the legislation firm so uh she is from the law she is a lawyer resource provider of be corporation as well so miss khairan liana uh, i would like to ask how are you doing alhamdulillah for today I'm having a lovely day but yeah. so i'm thrilled to join this anime forum uh, and i'm passionate about environment environmental policy and also sustainable development thank you uh, Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Miss Yana. Uh, I'm glad that you are doing well. Okay, so uh, before we begin, I will just uh, I will give a brief uh definition about what is actually air pollution since we are be talking, and also uh before I forget, uh I keep mentioning that we are having a forum. So what is actually the title of our forum? So the title of our forum for today is the Airway Brief insights of the air pollution so what is air pollution well air pollution is when harmful substances consist of particles gases or matter that are released into the air and it reduces the air quality hence of course the air is polluted so of course uh uh as a human we cannot see uh any dust or particles in the air right but uh, when the air is very polluted we can actually see a grey or yellow haze with our own naked eyes. Well, such an interesting things, but also scary at the same time. Well, and 
I think uh, because of this topic and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for your information, air pollution has also become a public health issue and does it bring us for our today's session. And now, uh, of course, uh, you won't hear me be talking all day long. Uh, I would like to ask our first panelist, which is Ms. Zunur. Can you explain how does air pollution happen? All right. Thank you, Dr. Aimuni, for the question. So, air pollution is a very serious public health issue, as we all know, with particularly concerning impacts during high pollution events like smoke episodes in urban areas. These spikes in air pollution can lead to noticeable negative health symptoms in affected populations. The reason for this is that the key pollutants driving these episodes, things like nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds, react with sunlight to form two of the most harmful air pollutants, ground level ozone and particulate, particulate matter. These pollutants can then be inhaled, causing a range of detrimental health effects. Ozone, for example, is a potent respiratory irritant that can exacerbate conditions like asthma and lead to lung inflammation. And fine particulate matter, PM2.5, for example, has been linked to an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, and premature mortality. Exposure to these pollutants, especially during acute spikes, can manifest in noticeable symptoms like coughing, wheezing, chest pain, and difficulty in breathing. The sources of these pollutants come primarily from vehicle emissions, industrial activities, and the burning of fossil fuels. So the problem is inextricably linked to our reliance on carbon extensive energy system and transportation infrastructure. Addressing air pollution requires tackling these systemic drivers. Clearly, the human health toll of air pollution episodes is severe, especially for vulnerable populations like children, elderly, and those with pre-existing conditions. And the fact that uh, these symptoms are particularly noticeable during these high pollution events underscores just how acutely people feel the impacts. It is a sobering reminder that air pollution isn't just an abstract environmental issue. It has very real immediate consequences for people's health and well-being. Mitigating these challenges will require a multi-pronged approach of emissions controls, clean energy transition, and public health interventions. But the agency of the problem is undeniable. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you, uh, Ms. Zunur. Wonderful. So now that Ms. Zunur, she just told us uh, like what actually caused the air pollution. Well, of course, uh, I think I found it it's scary that most of them are actually contributed by us. So, uh, therefore, I would like to move forward to Miss uh, Alicia. As someone that uh, is an expert on environmental, I would like to ask, is it true that air pollution uh, contribute to climate change? Thank you, Dr. Muni, for the question. So basically, there is a critical relationship between climate change and air pollution. There, these two pressing issues are closely intertwined, sharing common sources and consequences that impact both our planet and our health. Um, understanding this connection helps us to see how efforts to co combat uh, one problem can also benefit the other. 
So basically, the connection between air pollution and climate change is complex. Key sources of air pollution like factories, cars, and power plants release harmful pollutants. These include particles and gases like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. At the same time, they also emit a lot of carbon dioxide, which is the main greenhouse gas causing global warming. This shows how air pollution and climate change are closely linked as the same sources cause both problems. So let's start by visualizing Earth as a big blanket. When we burn fossil fuels like coal and oil to produce energy, we release gases into the air, such as carbon dioxide and methane. These gases act like uh, an extra layers, extra layers of blanket, trapping more heat from the sun and causing the earth to warm up, a phenomenon known as global warming which is a significant component of climate change. So air pollution is burning fossil fuels, not only releases greenhouse gases, but also emits various pollutants. This includes smog, soot, and chemicals like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides, which can also harm our health and the environment. So uh, basically, these two connections have its own consequences. Um, for example, first of all, hotter temperatures for the Earth. So because this extra blanket of greenhouse gases causes temperatures to rise, this leads to more heat waves, which are uncomfortable and dangerous, especially for vulnerable populations like the elderly and children. Second of all, extreme weather. Uh, warmer temperatures result in more extreme weather events such as stronger storms, heavy rains, and severe droughts. This can cause uh, flooding, damage homes, and create challenges for farmers growing crops. Uh, and lastly, impact on the nature, which is very crucial for us to know. Climate change disrupts our ecosystem, which are communities of plants, animals, and other organisms. For example, some animals may struggle to survive if their habitats become too hot or if their food sources disappear. So in simple terms, burning fossil fuels is like adding extra layers to the Earth's blanket, making it too warm and causing all sorts of problems from both people and the planet. It makes the air we breathe dirty and changes the weather in ways that can be harmful for everyone. I see. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Alicia, for the explanation. Well, it is scary, isn't it? Now that I figure out, I mean, we all uh, figure out after she told us that uh, the, burning for, the burning fossil fuels uh, actually uh, contribute to climate change and how it caused a scare, uh, how it caused a bad effects towards our environment and we are the one is actually living in the environment. Well, now that we are talking about uh, the effects, right? So I would like to ask our third panelist, which is Mr. Mubaris. Um, so I wonder, uh, since you are uh, an expert in the economical sector, I would like to ask uh, if nations would have to spend money to cater to health issues causes by air pollution, uh, Mr. Mubaris. Thank you for the question, Doctor. Um, for me, of course, every nation will try to overcome the issue caused by the air pollution, even it will hurt the countries economically. In the United States alone, cardiovascular disease and other respiratory conditions caused by breathing in air pollution were estimated to cause about 107,000 premature deaths and around $120 billion in annual healthcare costs. This is a staggering statistic that highlights the massive economic toll of air pollution in the United States. Because the death is an enormous human tragedy, tragedy cutting short the lives of tens of thousands of people every year. And the $120 billion in annual healthcare costs in an, is an astronomical figure placing a huge burden on the U.S. healthcare system and economy as a whole. This number demonstrates that air pollution is not just an environmental issue, but also major public health crisis with severe economic ramifications. 
the impacts go beyond just medical, uh, medical costs, reduced productivity, lost wages, and other economic disruption likely add further costs up to of the 120 billion f figures. So overall, the, this data paints a compelling picture of the staggering toll that air pollution takes, not just on human life, but on the economy as a whole. It's a sobering reminder of the critical importance of clean air policies and environmental protections. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Mubaris. Well, well, such a large number, isn't it? Well, of course, we uh, as a uh, as a human, we never realize that actually there are a lot of. Uh, there a huge amount of money that is spent to cater to this uh, to these health issues that is caused by air pollution. Well, of course, if we actually improve ourselves, then uh, the money can actually be used uh, towards something else. But uh, of course, uh, moving forward, now, uh, we see that air pollution cause uh it causes a lot of bad effects and it also uh, affects our economical sector now i am wondering uh whether there is any policies or actions taken so therefore i would like to ask uh miss yana so since air pollution has become a public health issue uh, so, Ms. Yana, as someone that is in charge of legal activities in BE corporations, uh, I would like to ask, can you explain about policies of air pollution? All right. Thank you for the question, Dr. Aimuni. So, basically, in Malaysia, we do have a domestic law uh, that referring to the legal framework that govern, uh, government, government that, I'm sorry, government that internal affair of the country, and it in Patients are uh, a broad uh, range of law and regulation that are enacted by the Malaysian leg legislative bodies, bodies and also uh, applicable within the nation border. So, if you want, if you guys want to know, actually, pollution is controlled in Malaysia through a various environmental policies and law, such as the Environmental Quality Act of uh, 1974 with a subsidiary legislation such as Malaysian Ambient Air Quality Standard 2013. For the environmental quality, which is Clean Air Regulation 2014, and um, the Clean Air Regulation further make a provisions for the equipping and the monitoring of the air pollution control system, offense, and also penalties and others. So, um, with this Environment Quality Act of uh, 1974, it's ensured that owner of premises involved in the relevant activities and also industries must now be prudent. It is uh, op uh, operations such as uh, to ensure that it's compiled with a clean air regulation, regulation which is uh, in effect uh, shall reduce the emission of air pollution, which is including carbon, into the atmosphere. So later on in 1996, for the set of re uh, region and global harmonization, a new system was adapted by the government known as uh, Air Pollution Index. So. Air Pollution Index, we also know as API, which is, we can call it as RP. It's RP follow the Pollutant Standard uh, Index, which is PSI, which is the use in the United States uh, air monitoring uh, system. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful information, Miss Yana. Thank you for the explanation. Now we know that uh, Malaysia, uh, I, I'm glad that uh, as, uh, an, as a Malaysian, our country actually uh, has a specific policies to cater to this problem. Now, moving forward uh, towards uh, Ms. Zunur. Uh, so uh, previously, just now, she explained about uh, how does pollution happens and what are the sources that cause it. And now, uh, uh, I am wondering, so uh, as human, we breathe, uh, the air we breathe, uh, of course, uh, we, living, uh, we are living in the polluted air, right? Surrounded by polluted air. So I would like uh, to ask Mr. Z uh, I mean, sorry, uh, Ms. Zunur, uh, can you explain about the major effect on human body that is caused by air pollution? Right. Thank you, Dr. Aimuni, for the question. So, as we all know, the air pollution really affects the health, right? 
It is also a pervasive environmental threat that poses significant risk to human health, spanning a wide range of serious medical conditions. The health implications of air pollution are extensive, affecting both respiratory and cardiovascular systems, as well as the neurological domain. On the respiratory front, air pollutants can exacerbate existing conditions like asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, uh, as well as uh, COPD, leading to increased systems, hospitalizations, and even mortality. The inhalation of fine particulate matter and other pollutants can inflame the airways, impair lung function, and make it more difficult to breathe. Cardiovascular health is also heavily impacted by air pollution exposure. Studies have linked air pollutants can end, uh, to an elevated risk of heart, heart attacks, strokes, and other cardiovascular events. The mechanisms are complex, but air pollution, I'm sorry, but air pollution appears to contribute to the development of arterial, I'm sorry, blood clotting abnormalities and cardiac rhythm disturbance. Worryingly, the neurological consequences of air pollution are also becoming increasingly clear. These are growing evidence that that exposure, especially during critical development periods, may be associated with cognitive decline, neurological disorders, and even neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. What makes this public health challenge particularly concerning is that the fact that air pollution spans both urban and rural landscape alike. No one is immune to its pervasive reach with diverse populations worldwide facing elevated heart risk. Vulnerable groups like children and the elderly and those with pre-existing conditions are especially susceptible to the deleterious effects. Addressing this multifaceted, I'm sorry, addressing to this uh, multifaceted health crisis uh, will require a concert, multi pronged approach targeting the root cause of air pollution from trans transportation and industrial emissions to energy generation and agricultural practices. The stakes are high but the imperative to act is clear. Safeguarding public health in the face of this environmental threat must be a top priority. That's all from me. Okay, wonderful, Ms. Zunur. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now, uh, now I'm pretty sure that you are being, uh, um, uh, you are being anxious because she just mentioned, uh different health issues and effects on uh, that will happen on our body on our body when we uh, when we consume uh, too much polluted air well of course i think after this i'm going to go out and start wearing face masks okay well moving forward to uh miss uh, i mean sorry i'm sorry moving forward to dr alicia uh so just now, she explained about the relations between uh, the climate change and the air pollution and how does air pollution actually uh, contributes a lot uh, that is causing the climate change. And now we, uh, we are having a extremely scorching hot day. So, uh, Miss, uh, I'm sorry, Miss, uh, so Dr. Alicia, I would like to ask, uh, since climate change and air pollution are closely related to each other, is there any solution to counter this problem? All right, thank you, Dr. Muni, again for the question. So now let's talk about the solutions and how they help both issues simultaneously. 
um, climate change requires immediate action at all levels of society. It is especially uh, critical to mobilize those who have both the power and resources to effect change on a large scale. First, we are looking at the global level, which is uh, unprecedented political changes. First of all, uh, international cooperation. For example, global agreements, international treaties like the Paris Agreement aim to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and lower pollutants like uh, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides by products of fossil fuel combustion. And second one is political will, which is committing to cleaner energy sources and setting stringent air quality standards help address both climate change and air pollution. The second one um, for the global level, which is broad programs, um, which is integra integrated policies, promoting renewable energy, energy efficiency, and sustainable practices reduces both greenhouse gases and air pollutants. Next, we're looking at the national level, adaptation and mitigation strategies. So for adaptation strategies, um, uh, disaster management, preparing for climate related disasters includes improving responses to air quality incidents like wildfire. Um, for the mitigation strategies, uh, sustainable, first one is sustainable transport, promoting public transportation, electric vehicles and non-motorized transport reduces emissions of uh, those uh, greenhouse gases and particulate matters from vehicles. Next one is energy self-sufficiency, which is transitioning to renewable energy sources like solar and wind eliminates, uh, to eliminate emissions from fossil fuel power plants, reducing pollutants uh, and other greenhouse gases. Uh, the last one is use of renewable sources. Re utilizing renew renewable energy cuts down on air pollutants emitted by burning fossil fuels. Um, and the last one, we're looking at the individual level, which is the first one is targeting high emitters. Um, this is focused on wealthy consumers, which is we have to encourage them to uh, affluent, encourage affluent individuals to reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, often means less reliance on fossil fuels, which is will lead to lower emissions of both uh, greenhouse gases and air pollutants, and we have to like um, and behavioral changes, which is we have to promote public transport, energy efficient appliances and reducing meat consumption, decreasing emission to decrease the emissions of uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, the second one is lifestyle changes, which is a reduced consumption of uh, goods um, means fewer industrial emissions. Manufacturing processes often release these harmful green, greenhouse gases, which uh, leads to air pollution. So by addressing climate change, we inherently reduce many sources of air pollution, leading to improved public health and environmental quality. While climate change, it's, climate change itself does not cause air pollution, the two phenomena are interconnected through common sources and mutual influences. Efforts to mitigate one issue often have benefits for the other. For example, reducing fossil fuels use uh, decreases both greenhouse gases emissions and air pollutants, addressing both climate change and air quality simultaneously. That is all. Thank you. Wonderful, Dr. Alicia. Okay, so I'm glad that there is solution to actually counter this and since she explained uh, there are different stages uh, as, uh, and there are also, uh, we as human, uh, there are also individual efforts that we can do to help, uh, uh, to help reducing uh, and counter this air pollution issue. So um, I would like to move, uh, I would like to go back to uh, Ms. Zunur. Um, so just now she explained about uh different health issues that can happen to human body. So I would like to ask uh Miss Zunur, 
uh, can we actually solve it? All right. There is one way to tackle the health and also economic impacts of air pollution. It is by influencing where people choose to work. Riches, uh, research uh, shows that fewer people want to work in cities with high pollution levels. This trend is driven by awareness. As people learn more about the dangers of air pollution, they avoid working in polluted areas. When people see how bad the air quality is, they are less likely to take jobs there. For workers, for example, this means they are looking for jobs in places with cleaner air to avoid health problems like respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. For employers, it is a challenge because polluted cities become less attractive for potential employees, leading to workforce shortage. To address this, uh, we need to raise awareness about the health risk of air pollution to improve air quality information. This will help people make better decisions about where to live and where to work. Policymakers and business must also work to improve air quality by controlling emissions, investing in clean transportation, and using renewable energy. Making urban areas cleaner and healthier will attract more workers. By understanding how air pollution affects job choices, we can drive positive changes, encouraging people to seek cleaner environments benefits both public health and the economy in the long run. That's all. Thank you. Okay, wonderful, Miss Zunor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, now you realize that uh, in order to survive, we need to work and gain money. But how are we going to work when we when our health is affected by uh, the air pollution? So we choose to move to other cities. But of course, that is not the, the solution. The main solution is your own awareness, which is one of the reasons that, uh, that we are having to this session. Wonderful, Ms. Zunur. Thank you for uh, enlightening us about this issue. Okay, so now moving forward to uh, Mr. Mubaris. Uh, I am interested to know that... Uh, so. Uh, one of the major contributor to economical sector is the agricultural sector. Uh, so I would like to know, does our agricultural sector is affected by the air pollution? Thank you for the question, Doctor. Okay. Um, of course, agricultural productivity is the foundation of global food security. So any major disruption to this sector have widespread ripple effects. <clears throat> a nearly 6% hit to uh, total factor productivity represents a huge loss of agricultural output, driving up food prices, reducing access, and threatening the livelihoods of farmers and agricultural works wor workers worldwide. It's concluded that air pollution poses a substantial threat to improving agricult agri agricultural productivity and global food security, with economic costs running into the hundreds of billion annually. This is yet another angle that demonstrates the critical importance of tackling air pollution as a global priority. Beyond the human toll, the sheer scale of the economic impact highlighted here is, a stag is staggering. Around $428 billion is an almost an unimaginable sum. It's equivalent to the entire gross domestic product of countries like Sweden or Thailand. Losing that much agricultural output has profound ramifications for global trade supply chains, and the overall health of the whole economy. The data make clear, makes clear that the cost of inaction are simply too, uh, too high to ignore. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, wonderful uh, information, Mr. Mubaris. Well, such a huge amount of money, isn't it? Uh, and, and it's lost because the agricultural sector is affected due to the polluted air. Well. 
one of the major uh, reason why we should actually started to take actions to counter to this problem uh, and since we are talking about how to solve how to solve this mr mubaris i would like to ask you one more question uh, so uh, since the uh, economical sector is highly affected uh, how does the government solve this problem mr mubaris mm, the solution is the efficacy of various environmental cleanup measures in directly removing airborne pollutants and improving air, air quality. Specifically, it highlights the methods like dust suspension, street washing and green infrastructure development as being particularly effective. But the broader point is that there are concrete steps that can be taken to directly address the source of air pollution rather than just relying on indirect approach. By developing green infrastructure like urban forests and wetlands, for example, can help fil filter pollutants from the air. And techniques like dust suppression and street washing can physically remove particulate matter and other airborne contaminants. contaminants. These findings are encouraging because they, they indicate that there are tangible, proven solutions available to tackle air pollution. It's not just a matter of setting emissions targets or passing, passing regulation. They are practical on the ground methods that can deliver real results and the fact that studies have quantified the impacts like the 20 to 30 percent of particulate matter 2.5 which is pm 2.5 reduction from street washing helps demonstrate the potential scale of these benefits of course implementing these cleanup measures require investment coordination and overcoming logistical challenge but the research suggests that the payoff in terms of improved air quality and public health could be sub substantial. It's an important reminder that we have the tools to make the to make a difference if we are willing to commit the resources and effort. So overall, the value of multi-pronged approach to air pollution, going beyond just emissions control to actively remove pollutants from the environment, it's an encouraging sign that solutions are available. Yes, if the political will and public support are there to put them into practice. Thank you. Okay, wonderful, Mr. Mubaris. Thank you for the detailed explanation. So, uh, ladies and, and gentlemen, now we realize that there is solution to the problem. The only problem right now is that are we willing to take the action and move forward to solve it? So, uh, well, what a wonderful discussion because right now, we are moving forward to the last questions for today, which is uh, I'm going to ask this towards our, uh, our lovely lady on the legal firm, which is uh, Miss Yana. Uh, so just now uh, you explained about the legislation that is applied domestically. So right now, can you share to us about how this policies is used internationally? Thank you. So for thank you for the question. I'm sorry. Uh, for international law, uh, for Malaysia, refer to the body of rules and principles that uh, the country interactions and relationship with other nation, international organization, and also some extent individuals. This include a range of legal norms, agreements, and also and also treaties that Malaysia has either ratified to as a member of a national community. Moreover, transboundary air pollution such as his caused by forest fires can affect uh, multiple countries, making the international cooperation uh, essential. So for transboundary em emissions, a uh, big part of air pollution and haze episode in Indonesia, whether in the form of pit fire blown from Indonesia or air masses from Indochina. Pit fire in Sumatra affect the peninsula Malaysia and Kalimantan, which mainly affect East Malaysia. To study the uh, transboundary air pollution, a study was conducted in urban areas uh, as a Kuala Lumpur to evaluate the level of a particular number concentration and also the input of PNN, PNS. Um, that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, wonderful, Miss Yana. Thank you for giving us insights on how uh, this, uh, how, on how uh, on the legislation side, uh, there are actually policies that is uh, happening both inter internationally and domestically. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
of course i would like to ask more questions to our wonderful panelists but uh unfortunately we are at the end of the session so i would like to conclude that throughout all the informations interesting informations new informations that we gain uh, from our panelists as they answer the questions so we can conclude that this air pollution issue is not just a simple issue where you can just ignore it and then just pretend it doesn't happen because it don't happen to you so like imagine if you wake up the next day and someone that is close to you uh happen to have a respiratory disease and of course uh, guess what the causes is which is it is caused by the polluted air that we all breathe right now so ladies and gentlemen together including myself i would like to ask all of us to uh to start to take action and we have to actually prevent this air pollution from happening because as crucial this issue gets and as we we are not the one that is going to live in the earth of course our generation uh, the youth they are going to continue to live in it and we have to we are the one that is responsible to make sure that they also have they are going to have a good quality in life and of course it is our own right to have a good quality of air and with that i would like to thank all of uh, our panelists which is mr mubaris miss yana dr alisha and miss zunur thank you uh, for willing to join us for today's session and also i would like i would like to uh, thank uh, a lot to its uh, the audience that is willing to join through the facebook live and also through the instagram live well uh, that's all for today. Have a good night, uh, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>